PSG is leaving behind 48,000 seats and building a 90,000 seat stadium that can breathe, think, and respond. We're talking about a $1.1 billion machine loaded with solar roofs, AI-powered acoustics, modular seating, and a digital twin that mirrors every bolt in real time. The pitch will monitor its own moisture, and the stands will move depending on the event. Inside sensors track crowd flow, while smart lighting adjusts automatically. Now this isn't just bigger, it's built to outplay every stadium in Europe. From full body fan tracking to underground heating pipes stitched beneath hybrid grass, PSG isn't upgrading, they're rewriting the stadium rulebook. So why walk away from Park des Princes? And what exactly are they building in Masi? Well, let's break it all down. Why PSG is leaving? Well, this starts with one word, space. PSG wants to be a global football brand, not just a top French club. While clubs like Barcelona, Real Madrid, and Bayern Munich play in stadiums that hold 75,000 to 100,000 fans, PSG is still maxed out at under 50,000. That's less than what Tottenham and even Benfica pull off on match day. Now the math is not subtle. More seats equals more money, more ticket sales, more VIP suites, more match day revenue, etc. And right now, PSG earns around 135 million per year from home games. With a 90,000 seat stadium, that number could nearly double. They tried to expand Parc de Princesse. They offered Paris's mayor 41 million to buy the stadium outright, but city officials said no. They argued the stadium's value was closer to 375 million and they refused to sell. That deadlock pushed PSG owners to find a new site and a new future. Why Massey? Well, Massey sits at about 50 kilometers south of central Paris. It's not downtown, but it's got something just as valuable, space and connections. It's near the A10 and A6 highways. It has two major train stations with RER lines. It's got direct links to the airports, and most importantly, the local government is rolling out the red carpet for PSG. The region offers 50 hectares of land, that's 500,000 square meters. Now to compare, Parc de Princes sits on just 8 hectares. That means PSG gets over 6 times the footprint to build whatever they want. Not just a stadium, but stores, hotels, and maybe even a training facility. Now the new side lets PSG build up and out. They're not wasting a single square meter. Now let's get into the fun stuff. Populous. The same firm behind Tottenham Hotspur Stadium in London and the Yankee Stadium renovation in New York are designing the stadium. These people know how to build showpieces, but what makes PSG's version special is the level of engineering ambition. A modular design that grows and shrinks, which is pretty cool. First, the stadium is not static, it's modular, and that means whole sections of seats can be removed or added. The lower tiers can be fixed, but the upper ones can be expanded with steel trusses and clip-on seating blocks. Oh, what's that? You need a tighter venue for rugby? Easy, remove a few thousand seats. You want to host a massive concert? Simple, slide them back in. The structure will likely use composite steel and reinforced concrete, with prefabricated sections lifted into place by tower cranes. Now these materials aren't just strong, they're flexible and fast to assemble. Prefabs reduce construction time by as much as 40% compared to traditional poured concrete. Now let's talk sound. This stadium is being shaped like a cauldron. It's not by accident. The roof will be built using aluminum skin panels, just like in London, shaped into a hollow dome that reflects sound downward. Sound engineers at Populous tested fan noise inside Tottenham Stadium using directional microphones and AI simulation models to make sure chants bounce perfectly, which means we get to expect PSG's new home to have similar fine tuning, turning 90,000 people into a thunderstorm. The seats will also be closer to the pitch than in most mega stadiums. That tight squeeze is going to make noise travel faster and louder. Now the roof is expected to be a tensile steel structure covered with lightweight ETFE plastic or aluminum sheeting. This style is light and lets in natural light and supports solar panels. There will be LED floodlights tucked into the roof's edge. At Tonham, they used 324 individual LED fixtures, giving perfect TV lighting with no shadows. PSG will likely match or exceed that, especially with more screen demands. So what do we get to expect? Well, probably a full wraparound 360 degree screen ribbon, plus at least two giant replay boards on opposite ends of the pitch. Now beneath the grass, that's where the science goes crazy. The pitch will use a hybrid grass system, probably a mix with Deso Grass Master. That means natural grass with plastic fiber stitched in, so that it doesn't tear up after just one match. And below that, there will be a subsurface heating pipes. 
a vacuum drainage system, and airflow tunnels to dry out moisture. Sensors in the soil will monitor moisture and temperature so turf managers know exactly how to maintain it in every season. And yeah, this does not sound at all cheap. And it's not. These systems can cost a lot up front, roughly 15 million just for the field tech, but they prevent game cancellations, turf rot, and overwatering. And handling 90,000 people isn't just about having a big gate, it's about flow. PSG Stadium will use a multi-zone access model, and that means dividing fans into clusters based on section and gate. Now to avoid cross traffic, each entry zone will have 10 to 12 turnstiles, plus facial recognition scanners and real-time occupancy tracking. The goal is to let all 90,000 fans enter in under 30 minutes, which is really fast, but it's something Tottenham Stadium tested successfully. Vertical movement will rely on wide span escalators and stadium-wide elevators. Concession areas will have open counters and overhead menus with digital wait time updates. Even buying a hot dog will be tech powered. Finally, the venue will include crushed barriers and standing zones and over 400 emergency exit points, meaning top UEFA and FIFA safety codes. The entire complex will run on a digital twin system, and that means a computer model of the whole stadium updates in real time, using data from thousands of sensors, crowd density, air quality, and even plumbing flow. Security teams can simulate evacuations. Turf managers can check field health from a dashboard. And fans, you'll get app notifications from your seat, nearby restrooms, shortest beer lines, and live traffic updates outside. Now, PSG calls this the connected fan experience, and it's all backed by PSG Labs, their in-house tech incubator. This new stadium clearly isn't just big, it's being built to think smart, run clean, and last decades. Starting with the roof, it's a fully integrated energy system. PSG plans to cover large parts of it with solar panels, possibly flexible PV sheets that curve with the shape of the canopy. These panels will generate power for stadium lights, scoreboards, and concession stands. It might not run the whole stadium, but it can dramatically cut energy bills, especially on event days. And then there's rainwater harvesting. The roof will collect thousands of liters during storms and stored in tanks under the stadium. Now, of course, that water isn't just going to sit there. It'll be used to flush toilets, clean seats, and irrigate the pitch. It's the same system used at Bayern Munich's Allianz Arena and London's Emirates Stadium. When you're running a 90,000 seat stadium, even toilet flushing becomes a sustainability decision. And when water prices rise, this system will pay for itself even faster. Cooling and ventilation is another key area of focus. Instead of just blasting air conditioning, the stadium will use natural airflow pathways, channels built into the structure that funnel breezes through the stands and concourses. The walls and roof are designed to act like a wind tunnel, using the stadium shape to pull in cool air and push out warm air. This is what architects call passive ventilation, and it slashes electricity use year-round. Lighting will be 100% LED, with automatic dimming based on daylight levels. Waste management? Will you expect smart bins that sort trash from recyclables in real time and digital tools to track what fans are tossing most, so that way vendors can adjust packaging and inventory? It's these tiny details, but they scale massively at 90,000 fans per match. PSG hasn't announced a exact green rating target, but given that Populous has already achieved LEED Gold certification on other stadiums like the Climate Pledge Arena in Seattle, you can expect a similar benchmark here. And in France, they may aim for HQE or BREAM certification, which are top European sustainability ratings. Let's talk about the numbers and the money fueling all of this. The price tag, I mentioned it earlier, over 1.1 billion for the first full project. That covers the stadium's infrastructure and the surrounding development, and most of that is being bankrolled by Qatar Sports Investments which is PSG's ownership group, Deep Sovereign Wealth Pockets. And they're not alone. Arctos Partners, the American sports investment firm that recently bought a 12.5% stake in PSG, is expected to contribute funding and strategy support. Their job? Well, it's to make sure this isn't just a stadium, it's a profit machine. And the returns? If it works? Massive. Ticket sales from 90,000 seats, luxury boxes, and VIP lounges that rent for six figures a season, stadium tours, naming rights, just adding a sponsor's name could earn PSG 25 to 35 million every year. Depending on the deal, then there's year-round revenue from hosting concerts, esports, conferences, even food festivals. 
PSG estimates the stadium could pay for itself in 15 to 20 years. Which, yeah, is a while, but that's actually fast for a billion dollar project. Especially when you're not just building for football, you're building a 24-7 entertainment hub. PSG says they'll break ground soon and finish construction by 2029. By then, Parc des Princes might be a museum piece, and Massey could be home to one of the wildest stadiums football has ever seen. But what do you think? Is PSG leaving behind tradition or launching the future? Drop your thoughts down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you never miss a deep dive like this one.